We've already learned what aggregate demand illustrates. Aggregate demand shows the quantity of a nation's output demanded at a range of price levels. In this video, we're going to talk about short run aggregate supply. Let's start by defining short run. In microeconomics, you learned that the short run was defined as the fixed plant period. In macroeconomics, however, the definition is slightly different. In macro, we define the short run as the fixed wage period. What do we mean by the fixed wage period? This is the amount of time it takes for the wage rate that workers in a nation are earning to change following a change in some other factor like the price level or the level of total demand for labor or any other factor that might cause wages to change in a country. So wages are fixed in the short run because of things such as labor contracts, minimum wage laws, and worker expectations. In the short run, if firms need to reduce their costs because of a decrease in the price level, they cannot simply lower the wages that they pay the workers that they're employing. Rather than lowering wages, firms must lay workers off, reduce the level of employment, and this is how they will reduce their costs and meet the lower level of demand. We're going to see how this plays out in our graph in just a moment, but first let's move on to our definition of short run aggregate supply. The short run aggregate supply in a nation is a curve that illustrates the relationship between the average price level of goods and services in a country and the quantity of total output that businesses will wish to produce in a period of time at a range of price levels. The important part here is that the short run aggregate supply shows the relationship between the price level in a country and the quantity of output supplied in the short run. In other words, in the fixed wage period. Now this curve, we're going to draw it in just a second, is going to look very familiar if you've already studied microeconomics. In microeconomics, we learned that there was a direct relationship between an individual goods price and the quantity that producers of that good are willing and able to supply in a period of time. Well, unsurprisingly, in macroeconomics, there's also a direct relationship between the average price level in a country, that's PL on my graph, and the quantity of real output, that's real GDP, that firms are willing and able to supply. So our SRAS curve looks a lot like a supply curve in microeconomics. Here we have the direct relationship. As the price level rises in a country, we're going to see that the amount of output that firms are willing and able to supply, indicated by the Y, Y stands for national income, the quantity of output supplied will increase. There is a direct relationship between the average price level of goods and services and the quantity of goods and services produced by a nation's firms. It's basically the law of supply from microeconomics translated to the macro level. So as prices rise, the price level increases, the quantity of output produced increases. So let's talk about why there will be movements along the aggregate supply curve when price level changes. First, let's summarize our observations here. When price level increases, we're going to say when price level increases, this leads to an increase in national output. That's an increase in Y. When price level decreases, when there's deflation, as we call it in macroeconomics, there will be a decrease in the level of output produced in the short run. Why is this the case? The answer has to do with what we call sticky wages. Sticky is just another word for fixed wages. Because wages are sticky, in other words, they're not able to change quickly in responses to changes in the price level, Firms have no other option when prices fall than to reduce the amount of output they produce and reduce the number of workers that they employ. Workers sign contracts that guarantee a fixed wage during the period that they're under contract. There are minimum wages. There are unemployment benefits that they could receive from the government if they were to lose their job. For these reasons, firms are not easily able to simply lower wages when the prices of their goods are falling. Therefore, firms must reduce the amount of workers that they employ. 
At the same time, when prices rise in a country, firms find that workers under contract will continue to get paid the same wage. Therefore, firms are incentivized to increase their output when the price level is rising. They'll continue to pay their workers the same amount, but they'll want to hire more workers and produce more output to take advantage of the higher prices for which they can sell their goods and services. It's just like in microeconomics. When price rises, firms have an incentive to produce more goods because they can earn more profits. When prices fall, firms have an incentive to produce fewer goods and reduce the number of workers that they employ because they can earn less profit at lower price levels. This explains the direct relationship. This is the direct relationship we observe in our short-run aggregate supply curve. In future videos, we'll talk about long-run aggregate supply and alternative views of aggregate supply, which account for what we call the variable wage period, when wages do adjust to the price level in the economy. However, the short-run aggregate supply curve is really easy to understand. It reflects the law of supply from microeconomics. The explanation for why it is upward sloping has to do with the fact that workers' wages do not quickly adjust to the price level in the economy. Therefore, workers will be hired when prices rise in a country and output will increase. When prices fall in a country, workers will be fired and output will decrease. So let's now talk quickly about factors that cause shifts in the short-run aggregate supply curve. So we know that rising prices will cause a movement up and to the right along the SRAS curve, and falling prices will cause a movement down and to the left along the SRAS curve. But what can cause a shift in the SRAS curve? Well, this is a lot like microeconomics as well. In micro, we learned that factors that shift a firm's supply curve include anything that affects the firm's costs of production. So in macroeconomics, we can conclude that factors that shift individual firms' supply curves can also shift the aggregate supply curve. This can include factors such as changes in the wage rate, WR for wage rate. If wages fall in a country, firms are going to find it profitable to produce more goods at every price level. So we would expect to see an increase in SRAS to SRAS1. So this would be the result of falling wages. If wages rise in a country, firms would find it less profitable to produce output at every price level. So we would see the SRES curve shift up or inwards, as we like to say. Of course, wages aren't the only cost that firms face. Other costs that could change and cause a shift in aggregate supply are changes in resource costs. This could include raw materials, energy prices, transportation costs, and so on. A rise in resource prices would cause a decrease in SRAS to SRAS2. A decrease in resource costs would cause an increase in SRAS to SRAS1. Now keep in mind that whenever short and aggregate supply shifts, what it means is that the quantity of output supplied at each price level would change. So at PL1, for example, a decrease in aggregate supply would result in a decrease in the quantity of real output supplied. At PL1, an increase in short and aggregate supply would cause an increase in the quantity of output supplied by firms. Firms would find it more profitable at lower resource costs to produce output. They'd find it less profitable at higher costs to produce output. There are some other factors that can shift a country's short and aggregate supply curve. Government regulation is a big one. An increase in the amount of regulation of the activities of firms in a country would increase costs of production and shift the SRAS curve up or inwards to SRAS2. Reduced government regulation would cause an increase in the quantity of output supplied at every price level since firms face less red tape, since they face less bureaucracy, and are able to produce whatever they want, however they want, in the least cost method. So reduced regulation could potentially increase aggregate supply and increase the amount of output produced at every price level. Another factor involving government is the level of business taxes. Of course, a reduction in business taxes would cause an increase in short and aggregate supply. An increase in business taxes would cause a decrease in short and aggregate supply. Taxes are another cost faced by firms. Therefore, lower taxes would cause more output at every price level. A final determinant that could shift the short and aggregate supply curve is the level of exchange rates in a country. Now, because you're still studying macro, you might not have learned what exchange rates are yet. This is simple. It's basically the price of a country's currency in terms of another currency. 
So if exchange rates rise, if exchange rates increase, this means that imported resources get cheaper. Cheaper resources, let's say oil imported from another country, could cause short aggregate supply to increase. The reverse happens if exchange rates fall. If exchange rates fall, if the country's currency gets weaker compared to other currencies, imported resources will get more expensive and short run aggregate supply would decrease. Now, if a country only uses domestically produced resources, then of course the exchange rate has no effect in aggregate supply. However, in a global economy, countries depend on resources and raw materials and technology produced all over the world. Therefore, the value of the country's currency could potentially have a significant effect on the level of aggregate supply in the country. All right, in this video, we defined the short run as the fixed wage period. It's the period of time over which the wages that workers get paid is fixed because of labor contracts, because of government interventions such as minimum wages and unemployment benefits. The short run aggregate supply is the level of output produced by a country's firms in the short run. It shows a direct relationship between the average price level of goods and services and the quantity of output supplied. Finally, we talked about the factors that can shift a country's short run aggregate supply curve, causing the level of output to either increase or decrease at every price level. This includes changes in the wage rate, changes in resource costs, the level of government regulation, the level of business taxation, and the exchange rate in the country, particularly in countries that import a lot of raw materials. Mm -hmm.